All right, what's up, everybody? Y'all know what's going on. It is the Bobby. I'm sorry, this is the TPN Live. TPN Live with, with Bobby, Bobby and Renee. Renee. Yes, yes, yes. We, we out of the mix, guys. We haven't <laughs> done this show since November. You know, yes. we, we've been out of the out of the loop since November, but we're back. Yes, we're back. We're we back. Are. Um, so glad you guys are with us and uh, everything like that. Make sure I'm t- turning it down here. I'm mean, glad you guys are with us tonight. We have a very special guest tonight. We have yes. Miss Edwina Harris coming in tonight, guys. It's going to be a great show. Um, she has some very good some good stuff coming up we want to talk about. But before we bring her on to the show, we want to talk about some stuff that we got going on real quick. Yeah. Um, everybody knows that I've been DJing lately, so I got two shows coming DJ up. DJ Hot Pants. Oh, no. That wasn't no, it. Not, not. <laughs> That's the name I gave you, but you ain't like that name. Mm-hmm. I feel I feel slated. I I don't I don't like that. You didn't like you my about name. to be slated. <laughs> slated. slated. Yeah. Anyway, so um, this, so we're doing an encore show for sex and sensuality, the burlesque show. I'm on March the second at the Dance It Off Studio on 6080 Sandy Springs, Sandy Springs, Georgia. It's hosted by my homegirl Mika Ray. It is a great show. They got like 10 sec- 10 tickets left. They sold out the last show. So if you guys don't have your tickets, you got to get your tickets fast. This is the first erotic stage play that I ever seen. It's yeah. it's amazing. Well, well, I like what she's doing because um, basically she's she's bringing love back to the table, right? You know, and she's showing um, we as women you know, what to do to, you know, spice up our marriages or our relationships or whatever the case may be. And also the men or whoever your partner is, um, you know, to learn to appreciate what we bring to the table. So her show is really, really good. I think the last time I checked, it was 10 tickets left, yeah, right? 10, yeah, 10 left. So 10 left. Um, yeah. you guys make sure if it's, I'm sure the fire is all morning. on Bobby's page and I'm gonna post it on my page as well. So make sure you check that out. If you're here in Atlanta, Georgia, like you said, it's gonna be on March the 2nd. Um, and it's really nice. You guys will really enjoy it and have a lot of fun. It's very interactive with the crowd. So you will have a lot of fun. Right. Um, and then March 17th, yes. DJ Hot Pants. No. Ooh, lucky we live. <laughs> I'm gonna be DJing the yes. Youth Explosion hosted by Angela Crook mm-hmm. at the Temple of Faith Ministries um in Decatur, Georgia, from four to seven. The address is 1860 Glenfair Road. Um <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm sorry. You got that hot pants thing. I'm about to choke the hell out of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So again, Temple of Faith Ministry, guys. If you guys want to be in the house, support um stuff for the youth, I will be DJing that as well. Um, uh, what else we got coming up? Um, fixation. Yes. Fixation, fixation too, guys. Too. Okay, so this weekend is the last weekend before the last weekend that we have to film, if right. that makes sense. Yeah. So so this weekend we're gonna be filming um Saturday and Sunday. Right. And then when we come back, it won't be until the end of March. Right. And um, and then that weekend is going to be our last weekend, uh, last of, weekend. of filming so fixation. Four too. days left of principal photography, guys, and we are yeah, done. And we're done. We're done. And yes. then we're going to another production um called Deadly Affairs, which will be directed by my homeboy John Sylvie. Yeah. Um, auditions will be on March 17th as well. Um, you check out check the website um later this week for details on Casting opportunities for you guys to be interested in coming out, which I hope you guys are because it's a great project. Um, I came up with a story. My homegirl, Ken- Kendra Hendrick, she actually wrote the script. Um, and so and John is actually going to direct it. So it's going to it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's gonna be real so, fun. yeah, make sure y'all listen out for those auditions. For those of you that's always asking, hey, I want to audition, audition for you Want the next audition. audition. OK, yeah. so there is one that is coming up. So, guys, stay tuned. Make sure that you pay attention. Um, that audition, it will be coming up soon. The next thing we have going on, right? And the next thing, the big thing for us um, is the Miami Web Fest. Yes. Yay. Miami Web Fest. <laughs> yes. Dexter Jackson Guide to Dating was accepted into the Miami Web Fest. And we are super excited. That's going to be May 2nd through the 5th. And actually, this is my first time ever going to Miami. Well, wait, wait, wait. That's both our first time. Oh, you, your first time, too. I've been to Miami. Either. Oh, see? So uh, this is both of our the, first time. Hold up, Shorty. No, I'm saying I want to hit the Hold beach. Hold up. Look, I can't hit the beach. Who hit the beach? And what you gonna be trying to see? Sand. And uh-huh. water. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's you, you gotta, gotta be trying to see some sand and water. I already know he ain't fooling nobody. Uh, <laughs> and it's gonna be around spring break time too. Uh, yeah, down on South Beach, you ain't fooling nobody. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hmm. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah. So that's that's gonna be super exciting. Um, we're we were excited to get accepted into that film. Right. So we'll be there from the second to the fifth. Yes. Um, hope we, we don't know what we're nominated for just yet, but hopefully 
we win something. If not, it's still a great time being out there anyway. So, yes. you know, connect and you know, the connections and networking, yes. you know, we're going to do it all. So we're definitely, super excited definitely, about definitely. that. So making our segue into bringing in our special guest, Edwina Harris. You guys, if you were tuned in to my uh, Facebook Live, I told you how we actually was, 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 she, she pushed us into bringing back on yeah. <laughs> TPN Live. And because we didn't, I mean, we didn't even have a date in mind as no. to when we wanted to bring the exactly. show back because there's been so much going on. Um, so are we going to make a segue into that talking about, and I want to send my condolences to my family. My uncle, uh, Gene passed away. So I want to send my condolences to the Davis family, as well as the Warren family that mm -hmm. hit us really hard. It was, it was unexpected. Um, he passed away in his sleep. So he passed away peacefully. And not only that, he passed away the same way his wife, my aunt Hattie passed away in the same house, in the same bed. Mm -hmm. I said, she came back and got her husband. She died, what, 11 years ago? And um, she came back and got him. She said, you know what? Enough is enough. It's time for you to come on with me now, baby. Yep. And she came and and she got him. I mean, we seen him. I seen him when I went back for my nephew funeral. OK. Yep. And um, he is he looked alive and well. He was fine. Nothing wrong with him. He retired and then he went back to working. So, you know, he was fine. So you just never know the date nor the time. And we also want to send our condolences to the Hendrix family. Yeah. Um, our girl Kenya, Kenya, the one that's the co-writer of the the um, Deadly Affair, Deadly Affair uh, well, and Fixation. Oh, she wrote the script and also yeah, Fixation. I just, I just one, um, her mom passed away today. Yeah, that hit us pretty hard. She yeah. was a very, very, very nice lady. Yeah. Um, and she, her and Kendra was very, very close. And um, so y'all, you know, keep keep them in in your prayers. Keep my family in your prayers. We really appreciate you for that. And segueing into that. Um, Miss Edwina Harris, she want to come on and talk about some a tragedy that happened, and I'm, I'm waiting to hear more information about this. So we're going to go ahead and bring her on. I should be on in two, one, and hello, Edwina. Can you hear us? Hey, can y'all hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes. What's going on? Oh God, so much is going on. Oh, so much. So, so much. okay. So first of all, you bullied us. <laughs> into you bullied us, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> into bringing the show back, but it was a good bully. We right. appreciate that. <laughs> it, it, I was pushing you to your destiny. You yes. sure were. You sure were. We appreciate that. <laughs> so, so tell us about yourself and tell us about what you have going on right now. Okay, well, you guys, for those of you who don't know, I'm Ed, I'm E J N A from Rock the Mic with Smoking E J N A A N R L L C. We are a uh, A N R business, and we also have our own TV show on Slide Network. Okay. So. We have a TV show called Rock the Mic with Smoking E. Janae. We also host um, showcases once a month for independent artists, for small business. We give you a chance to network with vending and performing and just getting people out there. And sometimes we have to pay for the building. Sometimes we don't. It all just depends. But what our whole platform is to help those that are trying to help themselves for the most part and give them corrective criticism, not to deter them, but to help them grow into the profession that they are looking to grow in. So. Okay, all right. Okay. Well, EJ awesome. <laughs> one year showcase anniversary and radio. This is that one year that Smoke and I have been a team with radio and TV and showcases. So okay. Saturday is a big show, and we have so many performers coming. We just have to like, okay, look, we're going to have to have you for next month. We'll be there all night. There so. you go. Well, that's, awesome. that's, that's a good problem to have. That's a good problem yeah. to have. Good problem to have. All right, so okay. we'll tell, what's going on with you? Tell, tell, tell what's up with this Um. This policy, the procedures you're trying to get get going. Okay, so hey, let's Lena, don't on. embarrass us. Don't embarrass <laughs> us now. Look, oh, I'm going to embarrass you. I got my papers, girl. I got my information. So back in December 3rd of 2018, my nine-year-old niece, Mackenzie Adams, committed suicide in um, my mother's home. Hmm. My mother helped her. Uh, and it had it 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 stemmed from bullying. Um, she had been bullied you know, pretty much for two or three months of this, you know, in the school year, this particular school year, um, it was racial uh, because her best friend was a little white boy that she wrote to school with ever since she was what kindergarten. So they've had a long term relationship, but he was not her bully. Her bully was in her classes and he would sit right next to her and taunt her with notes showing her how to kill herself and different <gasps> things like that. Oh, yeah. And Damn. It, it just was horrible. It, it was it was horrible. And so 
digging and getting help from different companies and, uh, you know, anti-bullying rallies and people that are all about the bullying push, um, of course, reached out to me and we've, you know, I've definitely become like a sister to a lot of them and we, we talk on a daily basis. And so some things that we actually found in the State Department of Alabama uh, law. Mm-hmm. So June the 1st, mm-hmm. 2018, it's, it was a law that was passed called the Jamari T- Terrell Williams Student Bullying Prevention Act. It was passed June 1st, 2018. That means that every school in the state of Alabama that received funding from the state of Alabama Education Department was supposed to have this model policy in place in their handbooks when school started. That's not what happened with the school that my niece went to. They had a harassment policy that I'm sure was in there when I was in school and I graduated 15 years ago. So therefore, they already broke the law from the jump. So they Mm. did not have this model policy that the state made a law before school started. It also had in that uh, prevention packet was a complaint form, how to fill it out if the child was being bullied. This is what the teacher's guide they were supposed to go by. But since it wasn't in their handbook, they had nothing to go by. It was kind of whatever. And that's not the law. So they broke the law. So on Tuesday, I drove from Atlanta to Alabama to speak to the board, which I had gotten clearance from over a month ago. And I have a voice message that I am still trying to translate from a voice message to get it to Facebook, but I'll get it to you guys email or inbox so that you can hear them tell me that I could publicly speak to the board of education and the community that came out to not only to see what was going on, but to support me for those that I had reached out to, to come and hear me speak. Well, when I got there, the school board attorney met me at the door. Me, my mom, my sisters, um, my niece and nephews was all there with me when we walked in together. And he was like, are you Miss Harris? I said, yes, I am. And at the time, I was going in my bag to pull out the policy and procedures that I was about to pass to each one of them, which is the TBM policies that outlines from a clinician, Ms. Tara Towns, very detailed of how a bullying policy and procedure should run. But instead of them allowing me to even speak, basically, you know, challenging my civil rights. So I'm looking into a lot of different things that I'm going to go after them with just this alone, because it was a public forum and I had already been approved to speak and I drove four hours to speak to the public. So Mm -hmm. after dismissed me i went to a local restaurant that was maybe two or three blocks away and i had the camera crew from channel six news that came and a lot of people asking why wouldn't the local news that well i mean it's a small town they don't want to get shut down because they are actually supporting a real cause and not just some cover-up that they are doing and my news crew went back after i did my 15 minutes which i went live which at this point is about six thirty six hundred people that have viewed that from tuesday night and it's what thursday and the news crew went back and asked the lawyer why did he not allow me to speak and his response was i didn't want her to bash the people of this school system that wasn't my intentions my intentions was to get this policy to those people so they can help the people of the kids that are still being bullied at that school system because how i know the parents are constantly inboxing me saying please don't give up please stand up and please continue to speak on our behalf because we need somebody that's going to be that voice for the people please don't give up on us but they didn't even want to hear the positive that I was bringing to them. I came in peace. I came to offer a solution and they didn't even allow me to speak. They didn't know what I was going to say, but I had told them I came with a policy and procedure to give you guys, since you guys are asking the public in your public newspaper to offer their help. And here I am to give you my help and you turn me away. So they didn't, didn't want to look incompetent. That's what it was. They didn't want to look incompetent they didn't want either. But let me address the fact that he said he didn't want me to speak bad of them. First of all, your character precedes you. My mom and dad always taught me to always have a good attitude, always do 
as well as I can for anybody that I can. So with that being said, I don't have to attack your character. Y'all can't sleep at night anyway, because anybody that had anything to do with the death of my niece or knowing and didn't report it, they not sleeping anyway. So I don't have to deal with that part. God is handling that. I came to offer a solution for the people who don't have to go through this tragedy that my family has endured, that mm. we will do until the day we die. So they other kids can actually have a chance at going to school without being harassed and bullied. Yeah. It's not fair. And that's what I offered. And I'm going to go even higher because this has to go to the federal level because it is not a game. It is not a joke. Them sending me away, not being able to express and give this solution to that school boy, set my mom and my sister all the way back to the day my niece passed. They were so hurt. They was re heartbroken because you don't want me to call you guys out, but all you've done is lie and cover up what you know to be true. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's not what I come for. I come, I didn't drive four hours for mess. I drove four hours with a solution in my hand. I came with an answer. Oh, I was going to ask you a question. Why didn't you adapt the policy for the law that was set for the school board? Didn't really expect an answer, didn't really care because I already had an answer that all you got to do is copy and paste just like you're trying to do now. So when school came back in after the death and the burial of my niece in December, now they come back with the same policy they were supposed to have before school start. It's the same policy they're now trying to put into effect. What they have to is law. You were supposed to. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just, it's so crazy how they're trying to do it and I'm very th this is the school this is the um school system I graduated high school from and I really would just like to take the whole name off of my diploma and put somebody else because it's embarrassing that this is what you guys are coming to you were stooping this low for a nine-year-old baby that killed herself when you could have helped her that's that's crazy so let me ask you a question so like like you said, it's a small town. Have you talked to the um, the councilman there or the mayor of the town to try to get them involved? Or is, is that something that's doable? It's doable if they would answer. The only councilman, um, he actually did come out because his, his daughter and myself graduated the same year from, um, well, she actually graduated from a different school, but we went to school together. We graduated the same year. And he came, but he came after I left. Mm -hmm. um, but he's like the only one, because I actually had the NAACP from a different town come to support me. So basically the councilmen that are in that town, you know, it's people rubbing hands, money flowing, whatever. Mm -hmm. boy. If, not, if that wasn't the case, people would stand up. All you got to do is say, what can I do to help? And all I need you to do is just be there with me. If you know any information, give me the information so that I can move forward with what I have to do as the spokesperson for my family. But That's people right. are afraid because it is a small town and they all work for these people. They don't want to lose mm -hmm. their job. They don't want to lose their house. They don't want to actually go to jail because they told on somebody else and they'll bring that charge back up against them. I get it. But it was a nine year old baby that committed suicide when somebody could have stood up and helped her. I mm -hmm. help and protect people, kids every single day. And nobody, no adult had the uh, audacity to stand up and be an adult for a baby. Nobody? Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. So she was she was nine years old. She, so was she in a, the third or the fourth grade? She was in the fourth grade. So she was in the fourth grade. So I'm just trying to figure out, first of all, what happened to the little boy who was bullying her? Nothing, because no names have been called. So did you guys see the notes that he was passing? We didn't see the a note that she actually got wrote up for, but she had things in her book bag, yes, that the cops had. So, and the little boy actually described how to do it. Yes. First of all, where are the parents at? The school is protecting them along with themselves. So the school is covering everything. Now this baby has lost her life and the school is there rather cover them, which I, 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 you know, from a business standpoint, they're trying to cover it and cover it all up because like you say, it's a small town, something like this, get out. It will be very explosive. But I feel like by us being in Atlanta, we're the neighboring town, neighboring state, a neighboring town, state, whatever. We are the neighbor's 
to Alabama. And I feel like something needs to happen. This needs to go viral. This needs to blow all the way up. Uh, the names need to be announced. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yes, protect. I, I can understand protecting the little boy who was actually sending the notes, but the parents need to step up. Yes, but no one would tell them because that's what I, I keep telling people. You have to, that's what the McKenzie Foundation is going to be. We're building the McKenzie Foundation, which, you know, we still have to go find me up with that because it takes money. I, you know, travel to get these, trying to get to the legislation, leg, legislator, it takes a lot of funding because they we have to build a case so that they would actually hear us but the bullies when you allow these bullies to go unpunished they grow up to be adult bullies oh yeah they grow up to be men and women of domestic violence they beat up their spouse or whoever they it, it doesn't stop just because they got older it got worse as they get older it, it no. does and so people are afraid to call these kids out for one reason or another, their family has money or they going you know, the family come from a fighting family. They are coming, jump up, jump you or whatever. I don't care, but you have to address the problem at the root. And the root of the problem is getting the bullies named help their kids. So, of course, you can't just dismiss them, but get them the proper help. They and need all we're asking for because for him to be okay so for him to be in the fourth grade nine or ten years old and to be able to tell this child exactly what to do then there is a there is an issue deep rooted in his household you know what i mean he's not being monitored whether it's being monitored or what he's watching you know on youtube or whatever the case may be so they need to be exposed i agree with you wholeheartedly now we do have questions coming in and one of them is what did she do exactly? How did it happen? What do you mean? How did she kill herself? Yes. She hung herself. Huh? That she hung herself. That for one ain't black anyway. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, right. We come from a a, a, a family of faith. So the most of a, a a suicide, you know, Jesus on the cross, but some the people put him there. <laughs> you know, so right. that's not something that's taught in the home. Right. That's, That's what outside saying. teaching. So the only other place she went beside church, my mama house, my daddy house, what school? <laughs> That's it. So was she did she ever talk about it with you guys? Like about her being bullied? Who was bullying her? Absolutely. She even told me. And this is what I told her because one of her teachers is the mom of a guy that I graduated with. And his best friend at the time when we were in high school was my boyfriend, which we have, my oldest daughter is his daughter. So I told Mackenzie, hey, take this picture and show it to your teacher and tell her who I am so that she can make sure she protects you from these kids that are bothering you. I told her that. I told her that. So, you know, I didn't live in a house with her, but my mom and my sisters, you know, she would tell them. And then her friend that she rode from school with to and from school with the mom would know when Mackenzie had a bad day because Mackenzie wouldn't, you know, be talking because Mackenzie and my son, they can talk. They nine year old. They got to tell you everything. So when she's had a really rough day, she would be quiet and she would be like she, when the mom got Mackenzie to my mom, she would say, Miss Adams. You know, talk to Mackenzie. She wasn't very talkative this afternoon. See what happened at school. So it wasn't mm-hmm. that nobody saw the signs. We saw that she was being bullied. They they talked to her about being bullied. In fact, the baby girl that had killed herself in Birmingham three weeks prior to Mackenzie doing the same thing, my parents, my sister, them talked to her about it. Explained to her that that is not the way to go. You know, uh, that's only, that's a permanent situation. Uh, answer for a temporary situation and it just got to be too much for her. I, I just well all of these babies killing themselves is it I mean I'm just trying to figure out what is it like where are they getting this information from it's is it a common place where they can all go to and watch a video on how to do it like I think the root cause is deeper than the surface it goes deeper than what we're actually looking at you know what i'm saying for this child to be able to tell her i mean because i was just reading up on the story with that young lady who talked her boyfriend into Mm -hmm. killing himself Mm -hmm. it sounds like the same exact thing 
Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, what is it that they're doing? What is it? What is it that they're they're looking at or watching to be able to know how to do this at such a young, tender age? That this just this just right here. This just it, it, there are some things on YouTube. It's called the Gotcha Girls that I do know that the students uh, do watch. And on the Gotcha Girls, it is a a little storyline that is built by other built by kids to to tell other kids what to do to kill themselves whatever it is stab them hanging beat up whatever you it is you have got to be kidding me and nobody ever mm-hmm. tried to get this shut down no ma'am that this is what i'm saying yes putting the policy into place is great but this stuff like that Go, going after YouTube or whoever is hosting those videos that need to be shut down. Yep. It's like a game that's built by. So let's say the three of us want to uh, audition somebody, but you guys know, told me what you're looking for. And I tell that person, I build a story screen to show them what they need to do to impress the two of you. That's how it's, that's how it go. So just flip that around. If they want that individual to stab themselves, it'll be built in a storyline where they end up stabbing themselves wherever it's, they're supposed to stab themselves. That's what the Got You Girls is. What? Okay. Damn, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. See, this is what I'm saying, and 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 I feel like that's probably one of many because there's too yeah. many kids yeah. that's doing this. You didn't, yeah. I mean, excuse me, but you didn't hear of a lot of African American children killing themselves ever. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ever. And then for them to be babies is it have to be coming from somewhere. Yes. And see, and I know what it means to be shut down by a school board. Me being in high school had the same issue going to the school board as a student. Yes. And we had the school board members to walk off the stage. So a lot of the school board members, they really don't care. They there to get a paycheck. They dare to come on. OK, what is it that you want to say? OK, I'm not really interested in that. So we're not even going to talk about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, it, oh, and yeah. it takes some embarrassment. See, back then in my day, they didn't have social media. But see, right. they have social media now. And yes. this can either make or break you. Yes. This can either make or break you. So I am so with you with this. We need to spread this word. We need to get it out there however it can. Can you? What about a petition? No. A petition, um, cause see what happened was even with the small things that I've given you guys, I gave that to the chief of police in the town where my mom lived because the town where my mom lived is not the town in which she goes to school. You know how we do as parents. We know it's a better school system, certain places. We're going to do what it takes to put our babies in a better right position. And that's what my, my mom and my sister thought was going on when they put her in that school system. But it ended up not being the best solution. But however, um, that is the information I gave to the police department and they dropped the case. They said that they didn't find any, um, no evidence of bullying. Wait, what? Yeah. They said that they didn't find no evidence of bullying. Yep. Hold up. We got, we got a statement here. All right, we got a statement from a Lakeisha Jones. I'm going to read what she said here. Uh, she said, my sister-in-law saw a kid's video on YouTube that was a normal kitty video that had a clip in the middle of the video, like four minutes into the video, where the guy came on the screen showing a kid how to cut themselves if they want attention and how to cut themselves if they want to commit suicide. Oh, my God. Yep, that's some things that they say, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yep. That's 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 crazy. Yep. So it's real. And, and working in the school system, I see it every day. I know teachers will go around. It's like, oh, we got too much this. We got too much that. But that's why a clinician or some type of counselor that handles this particular area should be in the school system because yes. it's a lot. But there's also have to be adults that's not whack, not lame. You're not afraid to step up. It's one thing to be a mean and disrespectful person to these kids, but it's another thing to be firm and stand your ground and help and love these kids. I love my kids every day I come in contact with in the county that I work in. My kids, when they first met me, because I'm in more of a kind of rough area, so they would speak, so, you know, you would say or whatever, but it took time and I gave them that time. And now if I say, hey, I need you to do this, 
is no back talk is no you have to love what you do and mm -hmm. if you can't stand up to these kids and you can't demand your respect without cursing or losing your mind or or hating the kid how you gonna be an adult hating a the kid there are several kids that i dislike their ways and i'll tell them to their face i said baby i love you but your attitude oh baby that'll get that's not gonna take you far in life but if you work with me i got you Mm -hmm. You have to also be that same adult that's consistent. They have to see you consistently being that person you say you are. You can't be this good person today and try to curse them out tomorrow. You got to stand up being an adult as a teacher. You got to mm -hmm. stand up any form of education. You have to be that person every day. Because if you stop showing consistency to these kids, they're like, ah, poo, she's just like everybody else. I ain't got to tell, mm -hmm. I tell you, if these kids confide in you. You cannot you cannot turn them away. You cannot let them see you talk about them behind their back. They are not adults. And once mm -hmm. you lose trust from a kid that was already hard to get trust from in the first place and you lose it, that's why the education system is failing because people talk too much about these kids when you're supposed to be there to help them. Mm. Yeah. You're supposed to be there to help them. You're right. So, so what is it right now? Like, what is your stance? What are you, what are you hoping to get done right now? Right now, I need Democracy City School to adapt this model, the TBM, Tiny B. Mighty, Anti-Bullying Policy and Procedure. And I want them to name it the McKenzie Adams P Bullying Prevention Act for their school system. That's what I want them to do. This uh, procedure goes through six different types of bullying. It tells you what to do, how to do it, the signs. It also allows the parents to press charges against a child that has been bullying their child. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be a hotline. There needs to be other uh, devices that kids can carry that they can say, hey, I'm being bullied. Because sometimes in these anti-bullying campaigns in the school system, these babies are not going to say nothing to you. Be Why? Because their bully is there looking at them. Mm -hmm. And then have their friends helping you and i call it the bullying ring we have the main bully we have people that we have the watcher that watches what you do i'm gonna watch you for my friend and tell them everything that you do yeah then they have the ones that's been forced to be bullies with them because they're gonna beat them up if they don't help them so it's a whole ring of people that is involved in bullying one child that's crazy. and it has to stop it gotta stop it is has to stop it definitely have to stop. And this is very disturbing. I like every time I hear of a child, when I see the title child, you know, the child committed suicide due to bullying, I don't even click on it because it's too much for me. You know I what I'm saying? Because I have an eight year old and yes. he's, he's experienced some little form of bullying, but see, we came to school at the food. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we went my to school child knows that we, food, we are, so. we are plum crazy when it comes down to my kids, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and I, and I also stay in a constant contact with the teacher, but these kids are, st are starting at a very, very young age and is exactly. very disturbing yes. and something needs to be done. And that school, if nothing else, they need to acknowledge and adopt that what you have in your hand into their policy and and name it McKenzie. You know what yes. I'm saying? They need to name it that in honor of this baby, the yes. life that was lost. Yes. A little girl who went to their school who lost her life because of this. Yes. They need to acknowledge that. And that's the part that makes me upset the most is that they don't even care enough. Nope. They don't they even care out. enough. How could you not care enough about a child? Exactly. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That went to your school and you don't they even don't acknowledge. Cares. So, so did, did they even, so did they even, did they acknowledge her, her passing at all? The only reason her passing was acknowledged was because um, we had the funeral at the school. And people was like, oh, they must be working with them. And they did this. No, no, they were guilty. And so therefore we had it there, but it was the biggest place in town because McKenzie grew in, it was at capacity inside and people even outside. It was well over 500 people that flew in from all over the place just to 
witness her burial. And at first, and let me just say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that your family had to experience this. I'm sorry that this baby life was cut short. Yes. But her life would not be in vain. Absolutely not. It will not. She will, her legacy, everything that you're doing right now is going to keep her alive yes. and going. They're going to know her name, hear her name and be able and have to say her name. I don't care yes. what it is yes. in that town, in that school, in that state. They need yes. to know who Mackenzie is. Yeah. And that's why it needs to go to the federal level so that they don't have a choice not to say her name because it will be a policy by federal regulated laws that you can't even get around this. You're going to say her name. That's you're gonna right. say her name. That name you're going to say. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people that have asked questions like why we had this, why we had that. Well, the case is hard to, to just do mm -hmm. because boy has all they little whatever they've done so you have to discredit everything and then they keep shunning people away they don't want to hear what you have as i said i came in peace with the solution mm -hmm. family of the child that you guys allowed to be neglected and i came to offer you a solution my lord to help the people that are in my inbox on a regular basis daily to help their kids not go through or complete the task that Mackenzie did because there are some kids that have tried to kill themselves, tried to kill themselves before and after they've heard of her death at the same school. I'm here to help those families not have to feel the breaking heart, the heartbreak, the tragedy, the devastation that my family feel. That's mm -hmm. what I, I drove for. I was there and back for that reason alone. That's why I went there. So how can, how can you get the community involved to help with your process here? Well, my community is over here in Atlanta because you guys are the people that I trust. I know well, your motives are really to help and move McKenzie Foundation. I just want you guys to share the story, talk about the story, offer your help, input. If you see us out, tell people to come out, just support her name, her rat, you know, rally around my mom and my sister. It is not even about me. It's not about me at all. That's why I've been using my real name because it's not about numbers. It's about stopping the next child from killing themselves because somebody is bullying them. And I know, you know, we have family and you say, oh, the kid is loved and this, that, and the third. But if you can't get to those babies, it's peer, being liked by your peers is everything at their age. It's yeah. everything. Although so, the policy needs to be put in place, but there have to be some type of um, empathy on behalf of these teachers and these and, and the um, the staff that's in these schools. Like we shouldn't have to put a policy in place to do, for common sense, to know if a child is coming to you saying, hey, this person is bullying me or this person is doing this and this and that to me, that you don't take you know matters into your own hands to say, okay, you know what, let me stand up for this baby and let her know or let him know that somebody here in the school is willing to protect them. We shouldn't yeah. have to put a policy in place for that. They should already that should already be something that they do. If you're working with kids, why are you working with kids if you don't have any type of, you know, a caring heart for exactly. these babies? Absolutely. Why are you Absolutely. even working with children? That was my question, and that too. My mom and my my mom went up to the school. My sister and my mom both called the school and was telling them what happened. My mom even went to the school and asked that the boy that was bullying her be moved. Why would my mom have to? When you work, if you even if, let's just go to the church. If you're in your church and you over the youth, you already know the characteristics of every child, and it only took you about two three hours being in the room with them. You know these babies and if you've yeah. been with them for the several months and even some of these kids since they was in kindergarten you know these kids history you know them so to not know who's that who's capable of doing what is beyond me because i can 
Me and y'all baby. I met y'all baby that one time I came to y'all house. I knew he was active. He loved to have fun. He was a boy. He gonna jump off whatever. And he gonna get fussed and go back and do it again because he a boy. That's that right. Baby Bradley one time. But he's a good kid because he come from a home where I say, I'm going to tell your mom on you. He be like, no, don't tell my mom. But if some kids you say, I'm going to tell your mom, they be like, I don't care. She ain't going to say that no way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen those yeah. kind of kids. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as a teacher, as a leader over kids, you already know what you got to do for those individuals. Mm-hmm. I tell your kid, I'm going to tell them they going to stop. Now, he may sneak and do it, but if I don't see him, I ain't going to tell on him. But for this other kid, I'm going to have to write him up and actually have this te- you know, the policies put in place to get him, you know, put in ISS or whatever. Yes, I can get to the parent like I could get to you, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That wasn't the case for Mackenzie. That can get to my mom. My mom worked at the Department of Human Resources and Mental Health. Those teachers and supervisors and all those people, they worked with my mom. She was a counterpart. So you mean to tell me that my, you know my mom for over 30 years and you now lying and say she didn't come and talk to y'all? How wow. Dare, how yeah. dare you disrespect my mama like that? How dare wow. you? Got a lot, you got a lot going on, Ejene. There's a lot going on. Lot. So if people want to contact you directly, how, how can they do that? They can hit my inbox at Edwina Harris. That's my government name. <laughs> <laughs> or they can do Rock the Mic with Smoking Ejene. That's our business. I run all that. Smoke do too. Except for Ed- Edwina Harris. Like That's only me. That's- um, <laughs> They can uh, email the McKenzie Foundation at gmail.com. Um, that mm-hmm. that would be best if they want to talk about or if their children are experiencing these things. And I I'm I've been an advocate for I just it it fell in my lap and I've been running with it. So the McKenzie Foundation at gmail.com. Also the GoFundMe uh, McKenzie Foundation on the GoFundMe site. Okay, so it's, <laughs> it's the McKenzie. M C K E N Z I E. Yes. Foundation yes, at gmail.com. And they can email you. Yes. Um, did I see a, a, a GoFundMe or something? Yes, it's under the McKenzie Foundation as well. Okay. All right. So, yeah, we need to make some noise, y'all. Yeah, and the, for everyone, the, the under, it's right now on the screen. So yeah, the email is on the screen. So, if you want to contact her, let's go ahead. Let's make some noise. Let's create some hashtags. Let's get these people attention. Because yeah. something needs to be done. And in the state of Alabama, you had two babies to commit suicide back to back. Right. Come back. on. Why, why is it not national there is, news? There, there is definitely something wrong. You know what I'm saying? Why, why was it's, that not national news? And actually, the baby girl that committed suicide three weeks before McKenzie, her birthday was yesterday. And I talked with her mom. And. Mm. Yeah. I can only imagine. She wasn't having a good day. You know, uh, and I'm surprised she answered me, but she did. And. You know, but I've been, we've been a support system for each other. And it's just, it's devastating. Because my son just turned 10 February 2nd. And I just. No. And he's he's taking it hard as well. Because that was like his twin. They were six months apart. So. Mm. No. And people care, care little about these feelings. Right. That we have to live with for the rest of our lives. But That's I'm going to fight for the end. Okay, well, like I said, people want if you guys want to reach out to um, Asian A and support her foundation, what she got going on for McKinsey, you guys can do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any shout outs you want to give out to somebody? You, anything you want to close the remarks you want to say? I just want to thank you guys so much for coming out of retirement for my baby girl. <laughs> um, it's well, this a good cause. This, this is definitely a good. This is definitely it's a good not- reason too. Guys, I thank you so much. It's all about McKenzie. We even have buttons. Um, I'm going to Michigan. We got some things going on in Alabama that we're gonna do rallies. Okay. And okay. If you show up, we we're giving them away. Um, I don't have time for all of that. I just want people to keep her name alive. Show where these buttons when they ask questions. Just talk about her. Tell them to go Google her because she's Googleable now. <laughs> My baby girl is Googleable now. You can Google Mackenzie Adams and everything about the case will pop up. All right. So okay. I you guys so well, let, let us know what Renee and I can do to help support. I mean, outside of this, you know, we, we definitely want to be there. Mm. Um, you know and do our best to help. Yeah. You know, we didn't know the baby, but if you know Renee and I, we love kids or kids love us. I don't know why, but it, it is how it goes. Um, so we want to do our best to help support what you got going on. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Love, love you too. And thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. You're okay. welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ooh, man, that was deep. 
Yeah. That was deep. That was deep. Guys, Um, I, I just... First of all, we're going to pray for the family regardless, you know what I'm saying, and, and get things going on. For her to come on here tonight and still be brave, faith where she was, that's definitely, a, you know, a, a trooper right there, guys. So we want to make sure that we, as a community, do what we can to support what she got going on, you know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody want to do fundraise me for everything else and go, go fund me, stuff like that. This mm-hmm. is a this is a this is a good cause right now. Everybody worried about old boy lied about on, on Empire. No, this is the news we need to be talking about right now. Mm-hmm. Um, to get this get this baby, you know, up up there, guys. So I know Renee and I we're gonna do we're gonna do we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pledge some money too for the foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not just about the money, guys. It's as you said, it's about getting the word out getting there, getting the word out there, getting the message mm-hmm. out there. So we want to make things go viral. This is one thing we need to make go viral, guys. Not necessarily this particular video, but what else you got going on? We want to make sure we make sure that goes viral, so that way they have no choice but to listen to her and to get these policies in place for her. You know what I'm saying? So and whoever that attorney was that stopped her, fuck you. I I hope you having. I hope you're having a hard time sleeping I hope at you night. Fuck yourself. Stop it. Mm. I hope you're having a hard time sleeping at night, and I hope this is really, really on your mind. And um, you yeah, you, it's it's gonna be karma to come back. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, they probably put you in the forefront because that's what they're paying you for. But at the end of the day, uh, you gotta have some type of heart. You know what I'm saying? Some type of conscience to say, right. you know what. I'm not gonna be that person all, he to didn't, stop he didn't even her. To what she had to say for he just he assumed didn't. He that, just she, assumed was gonna, that, that she, she was gonna, gonna come, come in yeah. and she was gonna try to bring down right. whatever they had going on, which wasn't the case. She was trying to come in and she was trying to help the situation. Right. So you know what? That's okay because see, all of you guys are gonna have your day and your time. Mm-hmm. Everybody have their day and their time. And so let's make sure that the hashtag McKenzie Foundation go viral. And also I'm gonna get the exact name. She was saying the name of that school district, but we need to get that exact name of that little town yeah, yeah. in Alabama and, so we can put them and on we, blast. And we should flood the news station down there, the newspaper, email them, send all kinds of information to these people, flood their inboxes with this information, guys. Let them know that we're not gonna let this stand. So yes, I- I'm with you on that, babe. Yes. All right. Okay. So we're going to wrap up, guys. This was our first oh, show she, back. She, 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 um, um, the, I can't pronounce that. Demo Polis. Demo Polis. Demo Polis City Schools. Okay. Let me put that. I'm going to put that up here. Uh, the name of the city schools, guys. Let's put this up here so you guys can see. Oh, Demopolis. Oh, Demopolis. Ah, Demop- ah. Oh, we was messing yeah, that we all the way totally up. Messing that up yeah. I, we need to go back to school. M- O P O L I S Demopolis City School City Schools City Schools S C H O O L Yeah Okay and that's in um that's in Alabama, Alabama. So, what, what what part of Alabama she said did she say Demopolis Oh Demopolis Alabama no. Demopolis Alabama Demopolis City Schools that is the school who actually the the county the, the school who actually failed this baby girl Mackenzie Yeah um and they failed her not only once but twice by shutting down what her family came there to do. So you know what? We need to get that name out there. Hashtag Demopolis City Schools. Hashtag McKenzie Foundation. And All right. U.S. Jones Elementary is the name of the school. U.S. Jones Elementary. Thank you. I'm going to put it up here. U.S. Jones Elementary School. All right. So, guys, y'all got the ammunition. It's time to take target practice, guys. We, we know who our target is, so we know what we got to do. That's right. All right, guys. So, um. We're going to end our show how we do all our shows with a one, two, three, and peace. peace.